Another one of those characteristics of life is the response to the environment. Every single life, in order to maintain their internal environment, to regulate themselves, in order to find the energy and the matter that they need to survive, in order to find a mate to reproduce, in order to maintain the order that they have inside of them, they must do respond to environment to find those things, to, to deal with those things. And so, uh, responding to an environment is one of the characteristics of life. So, before you can understand that, you have to understand the concept of stimulus and then the concept of response. Now, so stimulus in science is something that elicits a response. For example, ah! maybe that scared you. Still, sure, scared my cat a lot. He went running out the room. But that was a stimulus that generated a response. I'm sure, I don't know if you were expecting that. You know? I'm sorry about that, by the way. But a doctor will do the same thing when they tap that little funny bone on your knee and you just respond by kicking it back up. It's called the arc reflex. You don't even have any choice. It's a, a, it's a natural reflex that we have. Uh, likewise, you touch the cheek of a baby, he would turn because he, he you know, uh, it, it's a stimulus to try to get to the, to the nipples to, to, to suck and you get the milk. Likewise, when you make a sound, the baby has a head turning effect when it goes towards the sound. Even before we grow up to learn things, we're already born with some basic stimulus. You touch something hot, you let it go. You know, It's about responding to that stimulus. It's about maintaining that homeostasis. Just the same kind of thing that makes an animal run when he sees the stimulus of the predator running after him. Life has many examples of stimulus response pairs, but I'm going to go over some of the most common types of stimulus that uh, usually life responds to. One of them is light, and there's actually a name for it. It's called phototropism, when you move towards the light and you see those uh, things at night flying towards the... Uh, the lights in the parking lot, that's a perfect example of that. You also respond to light when you wake up in the morning when the sun hits you in the face. And lots of animals obviously have eyes to, to respond to light. Uh, some animals also respond to heat. For example, that a snake can sometimes see the thermal signature of the animals which in its environment, which helps them find even during the night when there's very few little light. Uh, bacteria even responds to heat going towards or away from a heat stimulus. It's very common and you do the same when you get around a fireplace if it's time it's really cold and your whole family is playing next, next to the fireplace to avoid the cold. Uh, sound uh, is also another one of those very common things. We have ears and a lot of animals have ears to respond to sound stimulus and that's why you have those iPods and iPads and all other kinds of sound player to suit you guys. Uh, and Or why the whales use things like sonars to uh, talk to each other and talk to things like that. There's also magnetic orientation, and a lot of animals display this. Uh, they can sense where the North Pole is. Uh, some kinds of whales actually use magnetic orientation to uh, go north or south during their migration patterns. Birds also display that. It's very interesting. Uh, there's also electrical um, response. Uh, some sharks can sense electrical impulses of their prey in the water to locate them. Uh, and there's a, lots of examples of microorganisms that can do all of these things we've been talking about as well. There's chemical response, and that's a very, very, very common one, as animals need to so seek food, and that's why, for example, we think to have the sense of bitterness, the sense of smell, of sweetness, saltiness, all of these are examples of human chemical response, pheromones, things like that in animals. Uh, there's mechanical response, uh, responding to uh, being pushed, responding to uh, uh, feeling something, uh, responding even to the sense of gravity, of where, where the gravity is towards. Plants tend to grow away from gravity, especially as they become, as they're like the seedling, so that they know that usually the, the sun is on the way up, away from gravity, so they have this cool thing called gravitotropism. Plants also respond to light and tend to grow towards the sun, so they can reach uh, the best possible location to grab those rays, do that photo synthesis. All of these are great examples of stimulus pair response and the things that animals can do to cope with those stimuli. But remember, all life has to respond to stimulus in order to do all the other characteristics of life successfully.